thank you, Ratsan. Um, I'm Masahiko Hirao from the University of Tokyo, and uh, uh, on behalf of the all project member of PIBCOP AG, um, I would like to thank the Ratsan and the many colleagues from NASDA and Thailand. Uh, today, I would like to talk. Oh, sorry talk about the STI for accelerated achievement of SDG 12, means the SCP. And the first part of my talk is about our, uh, is uh, uh, some part of our result, of our research project. And the uh, half, uh, latter part is an uh, introduction of the Japanese policy we, Japan, how we talk about the uh, SDGs. Okay, and uh, this is the uh, introduction of our research project. It is a uh, uh, nickname is a PCOP Asia. The name oh, is, sorry. Uh, name is coming from the policy design and evaluation of to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns in the Asian region. And it is an ongoing research project on SCP, and uh, we started this project three years ago, and we have just <laughs> two years from now. And uh, this project is supported by Environmental Restoration and Conservation Agency. This is a funding agency and the uh, Ministry of Environment, Japan. And uh, its a, uh, name is uh, actual, formal name is uh, just a s <laughs> strategic research, 16, 16th project of this uh, scheme. And uh, in this project, 11 universities and research institutes in Japan is participated for this uh, project. The, I'm from University of Tokyo and Osaka, Ritsumeikan, and uh, Kobe, uh, Kyushu, Keio, and the, uh, oh, sorry. And the National Research Project, uh, Na National Research Institute, AIST, National Institute for uh, uh, Advanced, hmm? National Institute for Advanced Industrial, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> AIST, and the National Institute for Environmental Study and IGES, and the uh, United Nations University in Japan. So many researchers joined for this project, and I'm from engineering department, but uh, many people is not from the engineering, from uh, social science, from the environmental science, from uh, uh, industrial management department. So such people is gathering for promote the achievement of SDG 12. Okay. And uh, last year, as Dr. Uh, mentioned, we presented the policy brief for the SDG 12. Uh, the, we made a policy brief titled Reconfiguring Consumption and Production in Asia and the Pacific. And uh, oh, sorry. And um, today I have uh, some, <laughs> maybe about uh, 20 <laughs> copies here. So if you want to read more, please ask me to uh, ask me for this uh, printed copy of this uh, policy brief. And also you can download from by, oh sorry, by check this, uh, check our site. And uh, last year in a high level political for, forum on the SDGs at the Uni uh, United Nations, the, we uh, had a very good side event with uh, UN SCAP IGES, ah, no, uh, hosted by the, uh, Indonesian government and also Thailand, then they supported by UN SCAP and the IGES. Okay. And uh, this is a very brief description of our uh, policy brief. 
the, here at the center is a well being. Final target objective of the SDGs is to ensure the well being of human and also planetary. And uh, we proposed four directions for, for achieving the, this uh, ultimate objective. One is uh, policy expansion. Policy expansion means that the policy is not only for uh, waste management or uh, technology management, not like this. Must be expand to make a very wide eye uh, policy should be made. And the second one is a uh, system trans uh, sorry, transformation. It means that the, uh, many people discussed uh, that their system is very important. Not only one technology is not enough. They have to get that and made a good system. So system transformation is very much uh, <laughs> important. And uh, also CP, CP means the consumer producer linkage is also very important direction. Not only for producers, like a clean production is not enough, as uh, uh, you mentioned. The also the consumer consumption side is also very important. But not only, not the activity is the individual part. Consumer producer linkage, tightening the linkage is very important direction. And the last one is the bottom-up implementation. SDGs is, is a, uh, made by United Nations, so it's coming from the top. It's not true. It must be bottom-up implementation is very important. So many people gathered for this objective. And, and this uh, four policy directions correspond, correspond to sufficiency, circular economy, transition, and multi-stakeholder approaches. And to enter this domain, we propose 12 opportunities as an entry, uh, entry point for SCP. There's a, many entry points. and. Uh, I will describe these 12 uh, opportunities in the next, uh, in the following slides. This is a full strategic direction, as I've already mentioned. So uh, CP policies are expanding to the socioeconomic technology, technology policy domain. And second one is the linkage between cons consumption and production is a key. Third one is a transition. Uh, to SCP is a socio-technical regime shift requiring successive changes in social practice and so on. And the fourth one is a bottom-up approach. It's very important. So this is a 12 opportunities. It means that opportunity is an entry point for the SCP. And the, there's a experience matters more than good. Now the uh, we don't want to buy the actual products. We just go buy the function of the product or measurement of genuine wealth. It means that GDP is not the only indicator. Measurement of genuine wealth is very important. So-called beyond GDP indicator must be developed. And the environmental policy trends is uh, we have to catch up. It's not, a waste, not only a waste management, it's a very systematic part. And the circular economy, it, I, I think it, we don't, uh, I don't need to describe about this. And the, uh, sophisticated information provision designed for local needs, not for global. So local needs is very important. Dig dig uh, digitization technologies, sharing economy, infrastructure for SCP, tacit rules, indigenous wisdom, enhancing multi stakeholder collaboration. This is the 12th entry point for SCP. And do, within the, among these uh, opportunities, there's 
science, technology, innovation is very important. There's uh, some example showing the importance of uh, SDI to, to enter this, uh, these opportunities. For example, opportunity five is a sophisticated information provision, and uh, opportunity seven is uh, digitization technologies. These are only realized by using the up-to-date <laughs> information technologies. And also, circular economy, we need uh, very sophisticated recycling technologies, not just a real, or, uh, and get there and use again. We have to sort it and uh, pur purify the, for the good uh, products. Okay, I have to rush. <laughs> and uh, this is only one snapshot of our research uh, result. Uh, other example of the, our research uh, for the uh, circular economy, and the target is a lithium ion battery, LIB, is here. And the LIB itself is uh, coming from the SDI. It's a very innovative product. And, uh, to get to obtain this product, we need as many materials, but in the future society, we have to recycle it from the used products. And uh, LIB itself innovate our life, our transportation. It's a very important part, and the collection and the uh, sorting. Now we have a very good technologies is developing. And uh, someone use check for the, the manufacturing part. It, uh, the uh, LIB can be reused in uh, power storage in the grid, smart grid. And also, if it is uh, already used totally, so it can be recycled in the cleaner way. So STI is very important to establish the uh, real circular economy. And for the next, the, uh, we'll, I will uh, introduce very shortly about the Japanese policy for SDGs. The name catchphrase of the Japanese SDGs policy is a, a society 5.0. Prime Minister always mentioned about this. <laughs> Maybe someone knows about this. The uh, society 5.0 is a basic concept, is a uh, human-centered not a technology centered. It's a, as I said, the well-being is the center of this SCP. This, so the uh, same idea aimed to at SDGs, which is that no one will be left. So preparing the new national innovation strategies uh, made like this. I will skip here. So what is a so, uh, society 5.1, 5.0? The one is a very old age, the hunting, gathering, get the natural resource. We don't do it. We didn't do it. Uh, the ma making, uh, producing, just a bit from the na natural. And oh, sorry. <coughs> Second one, the agriculture, and the 3.0 is the industry, and 4.0. Maybe we are now between five and four. Uh, the uh, fall is uh, information, ICT technology. Everyone has a <laughs> smartphone. <laughs> okay, so this is a information-centered society, but the 5.0 is a human-centered society. This is uh, information is very important, but they're not the human-centered. <laughs> we have to consider hum human-centered society, and. Uh, if Society 5.0 is achieved, the uh, IoT will connect all people and uh, things, and all sort of knowledge and the information will be shared, and a totally new value will be born. So we can make new business or new products using SDI, and so on. <laughs> I have to skip, so please <laughs> check later. <laughs> uh, Again, uh, Society 5.0 has a, uh, oh, sorry, has a, this concept, and uh, 
all of these concepts or uh, factors are connected to, to SDGs. So the Japanese government think that uh, promoting the Society 5.0 is very important to achievement of SDGs. And also, Japanese industry group is also agreed to this concept, and many companies trying to, to change their business within the concept of Society 5.0. And uh, this is, again, our project results. And the, uh, uh, this horizon part is a life cycle of the product. And uh, this is a domain in the energy sector, sec uh, primary sector, agriculture sector, manufacturing sectors. In the, many, in the many sectors, we need uh, STIs. I'm sorry, I have to skip everything. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Please check later. And uh, so the, uh, we are still thinking that uh, we are, our project, we don't directly uh, develop the uh, new technology or new science. But uh, we are thinking how to gather such uh, new technologies and implement the society and uh, make a new business or a new society, new, new community. So uh, I'm very happy to collaborate with uh, uh, colleagues in uh, Thailand and the many uh, global society, uh, global uh, organizations. Uh, so our PCOP Asia project members are sincerely grateful to NASDA government of Thailand and APRSCP for having this opportunity and willing to collaborate further for accelerate the achievement of SDGs 12. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I think we still have time for two, three questions. You can, you know, directly to each speaker or you in general, or you can have your own, you know, additional to this, please. Any questions from the floor or any comments? Yes, please. Ajahn Chon. Ajahn Chon is from the SDG Move, you know, uh, funded from the Thailand Research Fund. He's from the uh, Thammasat University. Um, thank you, all speakers, uh, for for very insightful presentations. Uh, I have one question for uh, Professor Hirao. Um, at one point, when you talk about the project Pepco Asia, and you and you mentioned one part about indigenous wisdom and also like local participation. Um, can you elaborate on, on that point a little bit, how, how, how the project includes the indigenous wisdom into um, the research on, on SCP? Thank you. You can think about it. Second question, any from the floor? Any more? If no more, I will hold just only this. OK, and then you, you add. Oh, you have a question? Yeah, am I allowed? Yeah. Okay, uh, Professor Hirao, thank you so much for the presentation. I thought it was very exciting. Um, can you also explain what you mean by tacit rules as being one of the 12 opportunities was tacit rules? I thought it was interesting. Thank you. So, no more question, right? Okay, just only one. Okay, Professor Hirao. Well, Well, actually, and it's not a question. I will have something to supplement to in terms of the indigenous knowledge and the STI after Professor respond to your question. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a very good uh, question and comment. And yeah, in the, our project is a main part is from academia, but actually we are involving the. Uh, Industry part, so the maybe the Panasonic or uh, I, I cannot say the actual name, but the, some many industry part is uh, joining our very individual members, so they are collaborate with each other. I myself is from chemical engineering, so I have a good correlation uh, relation with the uh, uh, chemical industry association. The chemical industry association is also now thinking about the. Uh, uh, SDGs approach. So we have many. Uh, we are getting 
many ideas from uh, industry and uh, <laughs> Uh, and also many other uh, local communities. Also, uh, we visited many some good communities experience is gathered. And about uh, Tassitur, <laughs> uh, it's very difficult to say. <laughs> I think uh, um, especially in Japan, we have our Japanese people is uh, working. Uh, I work in the, doing the everything in the, considering the rule. <laughs> we, for the, if the uh, government says that they're sorting the plastics and the garbage, and, and ma many people do, th do so. So, but the, it's a, so first it is coming from the government, but the now it's a community's activities. How we have to separate, how uh, it works for the next uh, next uh, circulation. So such kind of uh, local activity and the local uh, rules or local knowledge is very important, we think. So we mentioned about that. So, uh, <laughs> later. And, uh, <laughs> thank you. And, uh, it, it, it it's okay. So silly, you can add more. Um, thank you. If I may just add to this uh, local knowledge and STI, there was a workshop on this, uh, there was an expert group workshop on STI for SDGs in, in, in January in Bangkok. I'm not so sure whether um, you attended that or not, but I haven't seen Thai delegates either. Anyway, um, the, the big discussion now is also, and the direction is moving toward this local knowledge um, to harness and capitalize on local knowledge and local wisdom to achieve SDGs. Because as the, at the end of the day, SDGs is for people, and then um, people should also benefit from their own kind of a, uh, advancing their own technologies. So, and then I believe, because I was in that station, and um, it's going to be part, the workshop is to develop uh, STI roadmap for SDG, of course. So, the, the, to, to capitalize on local wisdoms and technologies, let's say the, the medicines, the herb, local herbs, also mentioned as one of the, the way to go. There are also many local wisdoms and technologies as well. So I can, I can also send you that link. And uh, I'm, I'm not so sure whether Thailand is part of that uh, group, but, but it should be beneficial if uh, Thai delegates can be part of that discussion. Thank you. Okay, uh, Puja, you have some last word? half minute and then turn it and then we will close no, the session. Actually just to add on the indigenous knowledge, this is a personal favorite topic of mine. I did a lot of research on it. But uh, no, when we are talking about science and innovation, um, as I said, that there is a lot of new information there. There's a lot of new science there. But we also need to look at what already exists. There's a lot of knowledge that is present. Um, like the local and indigenous knowledge in the country itself, which is more appropriate for the local circumstances. So there is really a lot more awareness on it, and a lot of work is being done, but a lot more needs to be done to see how this local knowledge that is usually just word of mouth can actually be um, documented in some cases, and in other cases, how then it can be translated into policy. So I had mentioned the science policy interface, but also there is a need to bridge this gap. The knowledge to knowledge gap that exists also needs to be bridged. Uh, thank you. Just one quick point on this. The data bank I mentioned earlier, apart from the a part of this STI roadmap. I, I hope as a result of that workshop, uh, they would include the local kind of a technology and wisdom in that data bank as well. But it can be hard to implement, but yeah, just to let you know. Thank you. Yes.
Okay, I, I just want to uh, draw out some alignment between our presentations, uh, thanks to the co-speakers and uh, Dr. Rudd. Um, one I thought was very exciting was to see that we all talk about circular economy in the metal sector. Um, and this area with the remanufacturing, um, the re uh, reuse, recycling, looking at the, the different high value loops of circular economy, I find really exciting. And it's a big business opportunity. We're tracking the different businesses that are um, making money um, in this area as well as supporting sustainability. One I really like is a reverse uh, vending machine company in China. The name is so hard to pronounce, I, but I will send it to Dr. Rutt. They got investment $7 million to set up reverse vending machines at the transport stations so you can put your cables, your phone, whatever, and you get the credit on your transport ticket. Huh? So you, so your recycling behavior is rewarding, rewarding your public transport behavior in a way. So reinforcing. Now they're worth 1.5 billion dollars. So I if you can get the old e-waste from the households, from the businesses, and sort them properly, even if it's not recyclable yet, 100%, it seems to be a huge business opportunity, uh, especially in a country with a metals sector and the Thailand 4.0, we're looking at how do you get those materials back into the economy. It's, I find, very exciting. Thank you, Dr. So thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, all the presentation of the whole today will be, you can download it from the QR code. And also we record on the video uh, this morning session so you can see it again, you know, on the website later on. So thank you very much for the, you know, the speaker and the audience. I would like to close this session. <laughs>